First, want to start out with some headlines from Henry Kissinger at an event on the National Committee on U.S.-China Relations saying that China-U.S. competition is permanent, that he expects the trade deal to be concluded in a positive way. Now, despite all of these macro concerns, the trade war, we are seeing the CSI 300 up almost a third since the start of the year. But where do mainland markets go from here? I mean, how much higher can they go? It's, it's a good question, and I think it's worth looking at uh, at how mainland markets performed last year. They were obviously down a very long way, and they've had a recovery this year, and, uh, and that's been a reversal of some of the very negative sentiment we saw through, uh, through the back end of 2018. Now, China's facing cyclical headwinds, and all of the recent data support that and really confirm that uh, through industrial production, through retail sales, through the housing market. It, that's, uh, that's those cyclical headwinds are compounding what is really a structural slowdown that we think is in place over the next five years, longer. Uh, and, and that does mean that the scope for further rallies and further valuation increases in, in China is probably limited. Now, ov obviously, China's authorities have scope to implement targeted fiscal policy, targeted monetary policy, but they have been very clear that they won't be opening the floodgates this time like they have in the past. And, you know, without that, it's, uh, it's difficult to see what would justify further significant gains from here. I mean, underlying it, the, the economic fundamentals have not materially improved. If anything, they've worsened. So it uh, it's really it seems like it's a sentiment-driven rally from here that would push it higher, if at all. So, Isaac, last time we had you on the show about a month ago, you had estimated that Hong Kong stocks could fall another 25% by the end of 2020 and that they're still not cheap enough. Has your view changed there? It, it hasn't. And we are, we've obviously seen a little bit of a, a climb um, up until this week where there's some sentiment turned better and, and with, along with global equities, Hong Kong equities uh, rallied 5 or so percent. That's reversed this, this week. And I think when we look at um, what's happening in the market and we, when we look at what's happening in Hong Kong, clearly we're in a recession here. And, you know, we can call it a technical recession, but the reality is we've had several quarters of negative growth over the last five. Um, that's beyond a technical recession. And there's a, a very wide level of uncertainty around the near term, <coughs> the near term economic outlook in, in Hong Kong. Uh, but what I think we can say with a relative degree of certainty is that this uh, recession could persist, uh, it could deepen, uh, and, and that's not a positive for Hong Kong equities. And that's taking into account that, yes, quite a significant portion of earnings um, within the Hang Seng Index accrues to China. But domestically, those earnings are going to turn negative. They're going to turn negative in a very large way. And that leaves us still thinking, even at this level, uh, Hong Kong's equity market looks overvalued, and it looks overvalued to a significant extent. And even with a sell-off this week, it's not the time to be coming back into the market and looking for, uh, looking for value. Did anything change this week now that we're, we're hearing that Alibaba is said to be listing, that we just got the pricing that came out earlier this morning. W would an Alibaba listing change your mind when it comes to the Hong Kong market that it's just too big to ignore? Yeah, I mean, it's important and it's, uh, it will lift the IPOs over this year to levels that we saw last year. So that's, that's a positive. But you know, the reality is the underlying fundamentals don't change because an IPO comes through. And those underlying fundamentals are, are deeply negative at the moment. Uh, it's showing through in all of the economic data from, from Hong Kong. The PMIs that we saw come out recently below 40 yeah. is, uh, is very damning, I think, for, for what's likely to happen in terms of earnings in, in, this, in this market. And you know, I, th I think that when you have that level of uncertainty, when you have that level of economic malaise, it's going to be difficult to point at that and say that there's a good opportunity to come back into the market just yet.